What's up, Cinephiles? Welcome to our review of Netflix's latest computer animated adventure film, Over the Moon, directed by Glenn Keane and John Cars. Now, before we begin, if you are new to the channel, please hit that like button and subscribe to Screen Kings for weekly reviews of movies, TV shows, and video games. Now, Phil, what is this movie all about? Over the Moon is about a girl named Fei Fei who builds a rocket and flies it to the moon to prove the existence of a moon goddess named Shanga to her father. Now, Kevin, tell us, what are your thoughts about this movie? So first, quick background. I did the research and Glenn Keane and John Cars, they are what we call the Disney legends for they are the character animators behind Little Mermaid, A Bug's Life, Toy Story, Monsters, Inc. for John Cars and for Glenn Keane is on Tarzan, Aladdin, Pocahontas. So we're talking about the roots of the Disney animation. If it feels like a Disney movie at first, that is because the directors behind it very much came from the Disney. I'm actually fine with the familiarity. There's a simple story packed with powerful messages about overcoming grief and loss which can be really helpful for a young audience because to be confronted with a death of a relative is a very big task to overcome especially for young ages out there so the movie understands these emotions and plays out beautifully and also i have to say the animation of course we are talking about veterans so we're going to get a lot of bright colors something that we have missed you have a lot of cute characters to entertain you and also to see that asian side being represented on screen there's the festival of the mooncakes there's the core values about family there's a myth about the moon goddess Chang'a, and it works together in building this neat premise which actually paves the way with more exciting things because this is another world building concept actually i'm also glad that i didn't expect it to be a musical even though we're working on familiar themes, I think Glenn Keane and John Carr's at some point, they try to go outside their comfort zone because from a music standpoint, they only did not focus on the classic Disney-esque ballad songs. There's also a pleasantly surprising pop music, which I think a lot of young audience here can relate. There's so much creativity here. This movie reminded me of Coco because it builds on the same themes. And to see this wonderful, world of Luminaria being brought to life is always a pleasure in the eyes. First off, I want to give a shout out to Glenn Keane. He is the director and animator for Dear Basketball, a short film which won the Oscar for animated shorts. It was written by my favorite basketball player of all time, Kobe Bryant. I just want to give a shout out to that. Now, uh, I have to say, uh, the biggest strength of this movie is the animation. The animation Oh my god, so far this year, this is the most beautifully animated film that I've seen. It's even more beautifully animated than Onward, to be honest. Uh, and that was made by Pixar. Yeah. There's a part here where there's this very unexpected concert that happened. And from then <laughs> on, all these colors bursting on screen is just beautiful to watch. It's practically all eye candy for me. I completely agree with what you said that this seems very familiar and I'm glad that you mentioned mentioned the roots that this movie had with its animators coming from Disney because this movie did everything right from the Disney playbook. There's this cute side characters, that animal sidekicks, mm -hmm. that annoying but cute character and lovable at the same time. There's this larger than life figure. There's great songs, great animation. There's that message about moving on and adapting to change which I think that will speak a lot to the younger generation and I think that since this movie did everything right by the playbook it's also its main weakness because it doesn't necessarily introduce anything new because all of it the concept it's all familiar to us again I mentioned the very cute side characters for example there's Gobi uh, that was apparently former royal advisor to Shanga there's this cute rabbit that's the pet of Fei Fei these are all fun characters when 
they are on screen but I kind of felt like their exposure in this entire movie was a bit short and I think that's a bummer because those characters are really really fun when they're on screen but again me saying all these things I would still love to gush about the animation because that animation really puts this film over the top kids should go see this movie because they will definitely have a blast with this yes definitely I agree Netflix will give Disney and Pixar a run for their money with this animation I think this is the first time that I've seen Netflix really start to give them competition like I think the keyword that I'm looking for in what you mentioned is everything is done like it's in a Disney playbook and what I felt like this movie feels calculated at times <laughs> like uh, some of the songs here we have ballads by Fei Fei sometimes I felt like they are like rip-offs from songs from Anna from Frozen or Elsa less the power vocals but regardless the voice actors here did a really great job that pop song however is a pleasant surprise because i really find myself tapping my feet to that song and i was just conflicted with the main character here though i should probably not linger on this tiny detail as much as a casual viewer will do because we have fei fei is posed as a very smart character so i am going to make a pass that he did this rocket ship alone on her own building this elaborate physics concepts about magnetism I'm gonna make a pass on that because this is animation fine but to see a character that has a really vast knowledge about physics and to see someone who also holding on to a myth it kind of seemed conflicting because I know that she's getting over the trauma of moving from the loss of her mother but I think that tiny conflicting characterization hindered my enjoyment but I really enjoyed this movie actually I don't want not throw much negatives because this is a harmless fun another movie that's worthy to be seen and a lot of powerful message that you can really impart to your kids but sometimes i just felt like frustrated because it ended up more likely to be a generic movie in my point of view when this movie could have been so much better also the way they set up this in the beginning like the script i'm getting familiar beats the the script is not necessarily spectacular just on the third act on how the route of this movie went to i felt like this type of realizations i guess they needed to explore more of the myth i felt like i, I needed more backstory from that myth and it's one of those Disney type movies where you get the profound realization towards the end but it's just that I can't get over sometimes that you can practically watch Coco and get the same and even better so when there's a more superior version why are you gonna go for this but you know this is the year where there's not much animated feature that's coming out so you take what you can get yeah I agree with everything that you said about this and especially about about her personality being a bit conflicting with her beliefs and with regards to her building this rocket and flying it to the moon uh, we all know that there has to be a suspension of disbelief there especially for me because I am a guy who loves up so so much and he practically flew a house with balloons in that movie so really I, I again I didn't well, I did yeah, yeah I, di I didn't have a problem with that but yeah I absolutely agree about that conflicting personality and well in conclusion um this movie is it a fun watch it's a very fun watch it, it's so beautifully animated kids will have a blast with this movie it has a strong message i think that kids will learn a lot from this but ultimately it also for the likes of us because like it or not we are old men who've watched a lot of these kinds of movies uh so it just feels <laughs> so so familiar especially for someone who's been watching disney films for their whole lives everything feels straight out of the Disney playbook but I don't want to go too hard on this movie because this movie is just so beautifully animated uh, normally I would give a lower score but because of that very beautiful animation which I am craving so much of since we were put on lockdown for all these months because the Willow Bees it was a beautifully animated but not like this so I am going to give this movie a 4 out of 5 stars 
because of that animation especially. Yeah, I definitely agree the animation is the strongest suit of this movie. I have to give props to Glenn Keane and John Cars. I believe this is their directorial debut so I have to commend them for animators finally getting their chance to build their own craft not just on the animation aspect but getting a hold of all sides on the production and the pre-production status. So I really admire that this one feels like a Disneyer than Disney and it does feel like a classic Disney tale from the start. And then I felt the directors trying to go out their comfort zones by exploring new styles. However, it still feels on the new age Disney. So I'm not really high on originality. Yeah. But that being said, this is very entertaining to watch. It's just 1 hour and 40 and you know, uh, a lot of things and messages that you can impart to young audiences. So I'm gonna give this one a three and a half out of five. And that's it for our review of Over the Moon. If you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, let us know what you think in the comment sections down below. Thank you so much for watching. Until then, see you on the next one. Bye-bye, guys.